Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer, uh, here teaming up with Practical Machinists to uh, bring you a video today. Uh, we're going to be talking about work holding uh, on an engine lathe here. Uh, when we get into uh, larger and longer length materials, uh, anytime we're beyond our three times the diameter sticking out of our main work holding device, the chuck here, uh, we're going to start looking at secondary work holding devices. And here I got a steady rest. Uh, set up on this particular part because of the length and uh, it's going to give us uh, some uh, options to do uh, machine work on the face of this part. Uh, so our video today is we're going to go over how to align the steady rest on the machine with the spindle and uh, set that up on our work piece here. So I'm going to take a few minutes here. I'm going to break this setup down and we're going to go through all the tools, the process, and the reasons why we align the tailstock on the lathe. So I got my uh, setup in the machine broken down and uh, set up on the table here. And uh, first we're gonna talk about the steady rest themselves. Now in our shop here at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, we have two different styles of steady rest. Uh, this one over here uh, is just a soft pad, a brass pad insert that actually makes contact with the part. Uh, on this other steady rest, this is the one that we're going to be using today in our demonstration here. This one actually has roller bearings in it. A lot less friction created and a lot less uh, damage and galling to the, to the workpiece itself with this device here. So just some of the components of the, uh, the steady rest here. One, we have a clamp. Uh, this is what's going to clamp it to the bed of the machine uh, along with the draw bolt that clamps it down tight. And then we have these uh, roller pins here, and uh, they're controlled by these adjuster screws. And this is what's going to allow us to align this end of the workpiece with the spindle side. And of course, we have some jam nuts. Once they are aligned, we can lock it in place. And of course, the top half of the steady rest is hinged. That allows the workpiece to be removed and uh, inserted into the machine. And then of course, the hinge uh, bolt here which locks the two halves together. Now over on the other uh, bench here I just got a little uh, illustration here the importance of aligning the steady rest to the chuck. Um, just to kind of demonstrate this I'm going to exaggerate this but if our steady rest is out of alignment meaning off center line from the main spindle or the chuck Essentially what's happening, and again, this is exaggerated, but we're not getting full contact across the face of our jaw, all right? And imagine this as it rotates. Now as this jaw comes over to the other side, it's making contact on the opposite side of the jaw face. So from this side to this side, and that's happening uh, hundreds to thousands of times per minute, depending on the revolution. So you're not getting full contact on the jaws. What could happen is after a while, this part will start to actually work its way out of the chuck, causing a dangerous situation where we can have a, an accident where the part may come out of the chuck itself. So proper alignment is key to safety. So we have full contact across the face of our jaws. And of course our part is not moving out of the chuck itself, causing any kind of dimensional error or safety issues. So we're gonna go through, I'm gonna get that steady rest set up on the machine, and I'm gonna go through a couple of procedures for aligning it. So here I have my uh, roller bearing steady rest set up on the machine. Of course, I wiped everything down, got rid of any uh, dirt and chips, uh, any such things. And then I got the steady rest set up on the bed of the machine. Now on one side of the steady rest, there is a V-notch which sits on the uh, the V on the bed of the machine. So that's what locates this steady rest uh, front to back. And of course, now I got my clamp down below. Now for this situation, we're doing uh, our longer piece was a two inch uh, diameter piece of bar stock. So uh, to simplify it, I found a two inch piece of scrap that is much shorter. And this is gonna help speed up the alignment process on my steady rest. So I got a nice short piece in the chuck here at this point. So right now I'm going to go ahead and just slide my steady rest into position and I'm going to bring the clamp across the bottom side of the bed and I'm going to clamp it in place. So now I'll go ahead and tighten this nut. 
I got that good and tight. Now, before I do any kind of uh, adjustment on my steady rest, I want to make sure that my part is running true. Now, this is a three jaw chuck. On this particular chuck, we do have some fine adjustment screws on here. So I want to go ahead and get an indicator set up and I'm going to indicate this part in nice and true before I do any kind of adjustment on my steady rest. So I'm going to get an indicator set up and we'll dial that in. All right, so I set up my one inch travel indicator and I just set it up on the outside diameter of my sample piece here. And uh, I've gone through and I've made my adjustments to my fine adjustments on this three jaw chuck. And at this point, I got the part running within one thousandth of an inch. That's pretty good for just a piece of bar stock. So I'm gonna call that uh, as good as I can get that there, one thousandth of an inch. So now I can go ahead and remove my indicator at this point. And now what I'm gonna do is just simply bring up these adjuster wheels. Now, I wanna make sure that I don't have any kind of debris maybe stuck to the face of these wheels uh, at any point like that, because all that's gonna do is just create more damage on my part. So I'm just taking uh, just a few seconds here to make sure there's no chips or dirt on those wheels. So now what I'm gonna do is just simply rotate my part and I'm gonna bring that wheel up until it just starts to make contact with my part at that point. So now I have full rotation on that wheel. And I'll do the same thing on the back side. Now, I want to make sure that we have just a little bit of tension on these lock screws too. That's going to keep any kind of backlash out of there. And now I'm just going to bring this wheel up until now we have full contact on both of these wheels. So at that point, I can go ahead and now lock my jam nuts. All right, so now I have these two set. This part was indicated within one thousandths of an inch. I have contact with the wheels. I'm basically ready now to move my steady rest out to the end and insert our longer part. So I got a set distance here for this particular part. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my sample. And now I'm going to loosen up my clamp. And now I can slide this out. I've already measured out the distance and created just a witness mark on my bed to make this a little bit easier. So I have that into position. And now I lock down my steady rest. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my long part and position that into my work holding. Now I already measured enough to hang out the back side of my steady rest. I can secure my part of my chuck. <clears throat> and now I can bring the top half of my steady rest down into position and cinch it up. All right, so again, we aligned our two bottom rollers. The last thing to do now is to bring our top roller down into contact. And I'm just going to bring that down ever so slightly and just put a small amount of hand pressure on it. Now this kind of varies depending on one, the diameter of the part, the amount of machining forces that we're applying to the end of this part. This may need to be adjusted accordingly. So now I have that top wheel making contact. My two bottom wheels are making contact. I can go ahead and tighten up my jam nut at this time. All right, the next step is we're gonna get another indicator out and we're gonna verify that this part is aligned. All right, so now uh, we got our part set up in our steady rest. Everything is secured on uh, this side. We're tightening the chuck. 
Uh, now we just need to verify our alignment. Uh, so just like our sample part in or our shorter piece that we had, uh, I wanna make sure that this end right here is indicated in. And again, this is just a piece of bar stock right now, but I went through and I made some adjustments on my fine adjustment screws on this chuck. And now as I rotate it, it's given me about one thousandths to a half a thousandths of run out. Uh, that's about as much as I can expect out of a piece of bar stock here. So I'm feeling pretty confident on that end. Now the next thing to do is to run an indicator from one end to the other to make sure that our part isn't going uphill or downhill. That could be another issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this indicator. And here I have just another one inch travel indicator set up on a surface gauge. This is gonna allow me to slide across the, uh, the bed of the machine. So what I'm gonna do is just run it back and forth, find my high side, and just find out where zero is. I'm just making a fine adjustment here. So here I got zero on this end, and there may be a little bit of bow to this part. So now I'll travel across to this side here, and I'm well within a thousandths on this side here. So our alignment in that direction is almost perfect. So there we have um, our part set up in a steady rest again beyond three times the diameter stick out we need some kind of a secondary work holding device uh, in this case we're using a steady rest that allows us to do any kind of machining on the end of this part um, now i went through just using a piece of uh, shorter bar stock uh, for aligning or setting up the alignment on our steady rest uh, this works really well if we have an extra piece of material here for the exact same size of what we're working with now, if we had something to uh, uh, maybe a different size that we didn't have the option of using, uh, just another piece of shorter stock or shorter bar stock, uh, I have another little tool. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this part out. We'll bring the steady rest back up towards the chuck, and I'll go through uh, setting the alignment on, with that tool also. All right, so going back to uh, adjusting our steady rest uh, with a diameter that we don't necessarily may have a shorter piece or a piece of scrap stock to, uh, to set it with. Uh, I got this little tool here that we make up, um, just a real simple little tool, almost like a, a boring head uh, type device. Uh, this is gonna allow us to adjust this and set it to a particular diameter that we need and use this for adjusting the wheels on our steady rest. Now this is just a just a piece of aluminum bar stock with a, a reamed hole in it and of course uh, a set screw to jam this piece up. Here I have just a 3 8 piece of bar stock with a point turned on the end of it. So I know this is one, one and one half inch diameter. Uh, this particular part that we're setting is two inches so what I basically need to do is get the radius of that one inch set from the center line here to the tip of this point. So uh, what I got here is just a ground piece of bar stock and a gauge block. So if I'm at uh, one and one half, I need to get to two inches uh, working off the radius. I just got a quarter inch gauge block that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna set that gauge block down uh, I'm just going to put a small bit of tension on this so I can adjust that. And I'm just going to set this tool onto that gauge block. And I'm going to push my point down till it contacts the ground block. And I'm just going to make sure that's nice and snug. Now this could also be done with a height stand or any other type of measuring device that would work similar to that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten up my set screw. So now I have this basically set from the center line to the point to one inch. So that will create my two inch diameter when I go to adjust my steady rest. All right, so I have my uh, setting tool set up in the chuck. I've already went through off camera and we've indicated this part of course. We always wanna make sure that the tool that we're using to set our wheels or our steady rest size here uh, is always indicated in, so I've been through that process. So now I'm basically using this point here to verify the position of this wheel. So I'm just going to, again, put a small bit of tension on that lock nut, and I'm just going to rotate this very slightly until it starts to rotate the wheel. So I'm just gonna bring that wheel up and make contact right at that point. So now 
we're making contact. So now I can go ahead and lock that set screw up. And I'll bring it across the back side and we'll set this one also. So again, small bit of tension on that. And I will bring that up until it just starts to rotate the wheel right at that point. And now I can lock this screw. And there we have it. This will allow us to basically set any kind of diameter that we need. From here on, it's the exact same as what we did uh, previously. So aligning a steady rest, the reasons why we need to align it. Again, uh, preventing that part from uh, moving out. Uh, setting pressure on the wheels. We always want to make sure we're watching our tracking because when these wheels are making contact with the workpiece, there's going to be a small amount of tracking or uh, uh, a pattern on your part. Uh, you always want to make sure that that tracking pattern never gets wider than the wheel itself. That's an indicator that your part is moving either back and forth. So always watch that tracking pattern. Make sure we don't have too much pressure on these wheels where it would start to uh, gall or damage your part severely. And there you have it. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, if you got any uh, questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.